Hey everybody, thanks for joining Spring Pack, the podcast. We have a great show lined up, lots to talk about, so let's get after it. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us for another episode of Spring Path, the podcast. We have a great show for you today where we're going to learn more about the American University of Rome, which many people don't know exists, but it is a very cool school. You're going to learn a lot about it from Kate Huseman today, and she's going to talk to us about what it takes to get into the school and then what the school has to offer. So Kate, thanks for joining the show. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is going to be great because you and I have caught up multiple times offline and you've told me so many cool things and unique uh, uniqueness about this school. But before we get into this school, I want everybody to learn a little bit about you. So how does someone who studies international education and is a current singer in a band, <laughs> how do you get to learn Asian cuisine? How did you get there? <laughs> yeah. Ooh, okay. There's a lot there. Um, yes. All right. So, well, my love of Asian cuisine started as a young girl. Um, so that's a, a kind of always been present. But I did um, live in Japan for eight months after I graduated. I went to the University of Vermont and studied French and Japanese language. Um, got to study abroad in France, but didn't have the opportunity to get over to Japan as a student. So I wanted to make sure that I got there after. So I got a job teaching English. Um, got over to Japan, lived there for eight months. Um, I uh, have also been very fortunate in previous roles to travel pretty extensively throughout Asia to China, Korea, Vietnam, Thailand, Indonesia. Um, so it's my favorite cuisine for sure. I'm working on my my dumpling wrap technique. It's still a little shoddy, um, but you know we're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's awesome. I didn't realize you had been to so many places. So you, you had a yeah. pretty good upbringing to see uh, so many different cultures and so many different areas with travel. That's actually been largely um, through work. Uh, so before I took the role with the American University of Rome, I worked for the uh, University of Vermont in their international admissions department and Asia was my territory. So I did recruitment trips um, over there. So I wish I had the opportunity to go to so many places as a young kid with my family, but most of my exposure to the world has actually been through my profession. Oh, OK. Oh, I didn't realize. Uh, so let's let's talk about that. So you now you're at the uh, University of or American University of Rome, and talk to me about how that um, relationship works because it's not necessarily an international school where I, I've interviewed some other schools that are overseas. This mm -hmm. is actually an American university. Yes. Yeah. So we would be considered to be an American university abroad or an AUA. Um, and there are a bunch of us. I'm sure you've heard, you know, the American University of Paris, I think, is probably the most popular one. Um, but we're all over and there's no affiliation in between us um, and also no affiliation with American University in D.C. I get that question a lot. Um, we're just an independent, private U.S. institution that's located in Rome. We were founded in 1969. We are accredited through Middle States, which is an accrediting uh, you know, in entity in the United States. So we're a fully accredited U.S. institution with four-year bachelor's degrees taught entirely in English. Um, and students can, can go there and get a U.S. degree, um, but not be in the United States. So it's a great option for students in the U.S. because, you know, we offer a very unique educational and like experience while still getting a U.S. degree. Also, our tuition is quite competitive um, when you compare us to comparable private liberal arts colleges in the sure. States. But we're also a really amazing option for students in other parts of the world who might want a U.S. education without having to go so far into the United States um, or, you know, who might not be able to afford the international tuition prices of coming to the United States, which can be quite steep. Sure. No, no, absolutely. So some of the things that, um, you know, you and I had talked about previously is just the, the barriers to entry for getting into the school are um, much easier in some cases than a, a typical international school because, sure. uh, you know, some of the things like Common App, like you, you use some of the, you know, more traditional uh, U.S.-based fundamentals for students applying. Yeah, absolutely. So the application process is going to be very familiar for students who have done it or, you know, have seen their siblings do it for the U.S. Um, schools. So we're on Common App. Like a lot of liberal arts colleges, we are test optional, so no SAT or ACT required. We do interview all of our students as part of the process. Um, so it's a very standard 
application process. Um, some public universities, I think the most familiar system is UCAS. Um, so that's like a totally different application portal for public universities in the UK. You need X amount of APs with certain scores and it's just a much more rigid um, system, but be, we're not a public international institution. We're a private U.S. institution. So the application process is definitely more familiar and, um, you know, compared to certain application processes, a simpler one as well. Yeah. And, and with that, you can also tie in, you know, your typical um, uh, loan processes for paying for, for school as well, right? Absolutely. So we're a FAFSA eligible school. Um, and some in some international schools are as well. You might be surprised mm -hmm. to hear that UK sure. schools can take FAFSA. Um, but AU, or AUAs, obviously, they do take FAFSA because we're US uh, schools. We also have um, financial aid in the form of merit scholarships and need based scholarships. One thing that is important to note with American universities abroad is that because we're located on foreign soil, the US government does not um, I'll permit us to issue uh, Pell Grants. So we're not eligible to give any Pell Grants. Okay. Um, so that's uh, one of the reasons why we offer financial need-based scholarships to our students is to kind of help fill that gap. Um, sure. We're also an eligible school to um, administer VA benefits for any veteran students who have benefits. Um, and so, yeah, we have a variety of financial aid options and we're really committed to making AUR as affordable as possible for our students. No, it's fantastic. And it's really good to know because that's one of the big challenges for many parents and students is just the, the financial piece to this. So understanding yeah. the barriers to entry for any university is, is, is great. Um, so let's segue quickly because you and I talked about this, this quote unquote culture shock uh, element to this. So let's talk a little bit about, hey, I'm, I finally decided I love Rome. I think it's going to be amazing. Uh, I want to go to this school and, and really... Um, get the full the full experience overseas but what are first year students doing uh, who are successful that maybe some aren't when they get there that, that whole culture shock element to this yeah absolutely um so you know we're in a unique situation where the majority of our students are not italian citizens so you know whether or not they're coming from south korea or from the united states they're going to be experiencing culture shock sure. and the coolest thing about culture shock is that it's super unique to the individual so while there is a kind of standard u curve where you you know start in your honeymoon phase and everything's wonderful and then you dip into the challenging stage and then you move through to you know acceptance um it's going to look so different from student to student culture to culture um but what successful students are doing is they're just kind of going into it with clear expectations um an open mind flexibility and commitment um i think it's a student who goes into this knowing that they're going to have hard days is going to do better than a student who is expecting to have the best time of their life every single day that they're there. Um, as someone who's lived in France and in Japan and who has gone through culture shock extensively, I can tell you that some days you're going to absolutely hate your host culture. And then other days it's going to be like, I can't believe the rest of the world doesn't operate this way. Sure. Um, and so the students who are most successful are the ones who are attending my pre-departure culture shock training, obviously, um, but also who are, you know, um, taking steps to make sure that they're going to be well established. So one thing I tell my students before they leave is to write them, a, them like write a letter to yourself, basically, um, that says like, hey, how amazing that we're going off to Rome to do this. We've been waiting for so long. Like, you know, Kate, my admissions counselor is telling me I'm going to have hard days. So like when a day like that comes, this is what I want you to do. And like, kind of like have a pep talk with yourself. And then when you're having one of those hard days, you can open up that letter and you can read sure. you know, what you wrote. Like I have absolutely no shame in sharing the fact that I brought my teddy bear to Japan. When I was 20 years old, I shoved this gigantic teddy bear in one of my suitcases. <laughs> and so when I got home, it looked like my bed at home to have my teddy bear there. It's just like that familiarity, like, cause sure. I knew that, you know, that would be helpful. So the students who kind of build their personal toolkit before they go, um, that, you know, work to make friends that try to put themselves out there, um, and 100%. who can, you know, understand that it's not all going to be, you know, rainbows and kittens the entire time um, are going to do the best that you are. 
Yeah, no, I mean, there's a lot to experience with Rome itself. However, to, to your point, I mean, some of the things you and I have talked about uh, previously were like healthy risks, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you use an example of um, just ordering your coffee in Italian. And I was like, oh, that's a great baby step for someone like me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, Rome is a city where, and I will be super honest, I speak almost no Italian. My background is in French and Japanese. I didn't go to AUR, you know, this is a fully remote position. So I, you know, I've never lived in Rome. Um, and so I don't speak any Italian when I go, I'm over there and I get by without any issue at all because it's Rome and they're used to having international, you know, visitors. Um, and, sure. and so most people can get by in English. Um, but that's not a way to like, help assimilate to your culture, right? Is by just ordering your coffee in English because you can. So those kind of baby steps, those healthy risks, you know, trying to speak as much as Italian as you can when you're off of campus, because we, you know, we operate fully in English on campus. Um, maybe, you know, getting a conversation buddy who wants to better their English in the community. Um, we have a lot of clubs and organizations. There's one that's a volunteer club. Our students will go and help like clean up like local parks. Um, so kind of putting yourself out there in the community um, can, you know, be something that can be scary at first, but the, you know, the students can benefit so much from just having a little bit of a connection there. Sure, absolutely. And that's actually a, a great um, next piece to this is that, you know, you and I have talked about the whole concept of, you know, Rome as a classroom. So when it comes to your school in particular, you, you have this great culture, you have this great history and, and the way that you're approached because your school in itself is a smaller school. I think you said you have about 500 students. So you have those great relationships with your professors, but maybe you can elaborate more on that, like using Rome as the classroom. Yes, absolutely. So at the heart of AUR is experiential learning, and it kind of comes through in, I would say, kind of like three ways. And, you know, the concept of Rome as our classroom is one of those ways. Um, so typical to a lot of U.S. institutions, we have a general education program. And one category of that is called Roma Caput Mundi, um, which are classes that are centered around Rome. So regardless of the discipline, they are focusing on Rome. So for example, with our fine arts degree, they have a introductory class called Sketching Rome or Roman Sketchbook. Um, with our English program, they have Writing Rome, um, so these are, you know, classes that your professor is going to be like, hey, on Wednesday, we're going to meet at, you know, the Piazza Navona, bring your sketchbook, and we're going to sketch multiple, you know, angles of the, you know, famous ancient statue of Poseidon, for example. Um, yeah. And so, you know, that's where you do, you meet your professor there, and then maybe you grab a gelato and you're walking up the hill back to to campus. So, the, you know, these are experiences that students in other parts of the world are not getting. And certainly, you know, if you go to school, I'm, I'm always pick on OSU because my brother went there and uh, <laughs> transferred because he didn't like it. Um, but, you know, a student going to OSU is not going to have that experience. Um, and so it's something that really is unique at AUR. And that's kind of one way that we do experiential learning. The other way is through uh, academic field uh, trips, one credit field trips that happen throughout the semester. Um, so depending on which program you're in, like, for example, our business students and our travel and tourism management students, they got to go to the Dolomites um, up in northern Italy, which is you know famous for a ski destination and study the ski industry there and the tourism industry there. Um, our students in our international relations and global politics program recently went to Northern Ireland to study the conflict, uh, the religious conflict between Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland, the rest of Ireland. Um, and so our students get opportunities not only to learn on site in Rome, but other parts of Europe and other parts of Italy. Um, we only have classes Monday through Thursday, typically. And one of the major reasons is because we leave three day weekends for these classes to happen. Now, they don't happen every weekend. Um, they happen throughout the semester and certain programs will go on one weekend, others on another. Um, and then also we just really believe in the power of inter like a tr international exposure and travel. So we want sure. to leave our students the opportunity to do independent travel on weekends as well. Um, so that's a perk. The other thing we do uh, that's kind of experiential is our housing. So we do offer housing, um, it's apartment style living and we spread our students out. So it's not a dormitory style. One of the reasons we do this is, um, you know, full transparency, our Italian neighbors would not love having a building of like 18, 19 year old <laughs> students, all international students all in one place would be very noisy. Um, so we spread them out for that. 
purpose, but we also spread them out because it kind of is more independent living. Um, so while you're in a flat with other AUR students, um, your neighbors above, below to, you know, side by side might be other Italian students, maybe a young Italian family. Um, and so you have the opportunity to kind of live quite independently from day one. Yeah. And uh, can you meet the neighbors and do they, you know, when you go over to ask for sugar, do they teach you how to make pasta fresh? That would, that that would be, be in my opinion, a wonderful risk for culture shock purposes, <laughs> yes. but that's up to the individual student. <laughs> no, that's great. So, I mean, some of the things we, we've also talked about is just, you know, it's all about the experience in Rome and you mentioned these kind of these academic field trips. So um, with these kind of field trips, you, you were rattling off uh, previously when we were talking, you, you were rattling off like, Greece, Prague, Ireland, and the key benefit to that is not only what they're experiencing, but they also get credit for this. Is that accurate? correct? Yeah. So they're one credit academic field trips um, that happen. Usually the students will leave either Thursday night or Friday morning from Rome and come back typically on Sunday night. So we squeeze a credit into that time um, while they're traveling with their professors and learning on site in these other locations. Yeah, no, it's, I, that's that's awesome. I think that's really unique. It's um, pretty cool. Not a lot yeah. of universities do field trips, you know. Right. So that's like the cool thing about AUR. So, so when students um, get ready to graduate and they're going to go out into the world, what are some of the the key um, uh, jobs or functions that they do? We were talking about some of your alum offline who are, are mm -hmm. just doing great things globally. But can you share some on that? Yeah, absolutely. So our programs, and I won't take the time to list them all, but they are pretty unique. Like we have an archaeology and classics program. Um, we have a film program. We have a communication digital media program, business, travel, tourism, management. So they're pretty different from each other, obviously. And we have 10 programs at AUR. So our alums are doing a wide variety of things, um, but they're really cool. I was sharing earlier that, and I should have looked it up when we were taking a break, but I didn't. Um, but one of our alums was just named the most influential um, woman of the year for businesses focused on environmental sustainability um, by an international magazine. So we really love to see AUR um, alums like in these really amazing positions. Um, We've got alums working uh, in policy work in Washington, D.C. that have gone through international relations programs. Um, we've got alums at um, Pepsi headquarters in, in Switzerland who went through our business program. Um, we have alums uh, who are working as museum curatorships who've gone through fine arts and art history. So, you know, we, we definitely get our alums into their their fields. We have a really amazing statistic, one I'm super proud of. 89% um, of our alumni are either employed in their field or pursuing higher education studies within six months of graduation at AUR, um, which is, you know, when you kind of go and shop around, I always tell students, you know, shop around, you're, you know, you got so many university options, but ask about that placement rate, you know, because at large institutions, you're usually sharing that at 12 months and at schools that have really good, impressive rates, they're sharing it at six months. So I'm just really proud. Um, I've worked at three institutions so far and AUR has the best statistic in that um, area. Um, so yeah, but we're really, you know, our students go on and do really cool things. I mean, it takes a very unique and brave student to come to AUR from their home culture and spend all four years and get a degree. And if they're taking full advantage of everything that AUR has to offer, which is very much also what Rome has to offer, then they're making some incredible connections and they're getting some really unique opportunities. Like Rome is the headquarter of the UN food program. And while we're not talking about graduate studies today, we do have a master's of food studies um, that is, you know, a lot of it involves connections with people who are doing, you know, frontline policy work in food justice and sustainability around the world. So our location is really advantageous to our students and our alumni definitely showcase that in the positions that they're getting. Yeah, well, I mean, you did. I, I was going to circle back to this, but you did drop a little Latin on us earlier, but you didn't give the meaning. So why don't you tell everybody what that meant? <laughs> yeah, so uh, the gen ed category that is focused on Rome is called Roma Caput Mundi. And it, it's basically like Rome is the center of the world. And for 
a very long time. It kind of was. Um, and the Romans you meet today still believe that it is. Uh, they're very proud to be from Rome. And, um, you know, once you get over there and you see all the history and you visit these places, you it's pretty awe-inspiring um, to be there and to be on a bus and to drive by the Colosseum and to think about sure. the people who have walked in there, you know, gladiators and um, to visit the forum and to, you know, see like where the oldest courts had, you know, um, rulings. It's just, it's hard to imagine. And um, it's very awe-inspiring and it, it attracts a lot of people. It attracts a lot of people who are doing really impressive and wonderful things. And we're very fortunate to be the American University of Rome because when Rome attracts these incredible speakers, you know, they're more than happy to come and give guest lectures on our campus. Um, so we're a very small school. So it's like, yeah, sure, you, you know, picking on OSU again, OSU is going to bring in a really, you know, <laughs> impressive speaker and you're going to be in a room with what, how many thousands of people, you know, you know, AUR is going to bring in a, a similarly an impressive speaker and you might be in the room with 50 other people. So you just have more opportunity to put yourself out there and be known um, and really make your mark. Yeah, it's really, it's about connecting with uh, your professors, the visitors, speakers, and just the city itself is, it's yeah. a, it's a very unique and, and awesome opportunity uh, yeah. for anyone considering it. So Kate, now that everyone's got to know a little bit more about you and about the American University of Rome, how do they get in contact with you with more questions? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm based full time in the United States on the East Coast, which is really convenient um, because Rome is, you know, six hours ahead of a yep. lot of us or more. Um, so you can contact me by email is probably the best way. It's c.husman, H-U-S-E-M-A-N, at aur.edu. You can also go to www.aur.edu and click on the admissions tab and learn way more about kind of how to apply. You can book a call with me. Um, you can talk to a current student. We have a lot of opportunities for you to engage. Um, you can also go on to Instagram and search for all about AUR. That's our admission specific Instagram page. Um, and we're actually, you know, doing a student takeover tomorrow. So you get opportunities to kind of get the student perspective and see what's going on there as well. Awesome. And what we'll do is we'll put all those links. Everything's going to be in the description below. And with that, what I will say is uh, stay tuned, viewers, for new episodes as we uh, we may connect with Kate and some of her other resources and uh, expand upon this series. And then at any time, just stop at springpath.net to see if the American University of Rome is a match for you. Kate, thank you very much. We appreciate thank it. Thank you. All right. And we are out.